Hello everyone, quick note here to let you know that this, that you're looking at listening to right now, is not the traditional full-length Mindscape podcast episode. That exists, you can either listen to it in a regular podcast browser, or even better, you can see a different video for it. See the link right below to click on it right away. The point being that uh, our old friend Jana Levin, who was on the podcast earlier, Jana, in addition to being a physics professor, is also science curator at Pi- Pioneer Works in Brooklyn, which is an organization that brings together not only scientists, but also artists and a whole bunch of creative people to do fun things. So we thought that for this solo episode of Mindscape, we could team up Pioneer Works and Mindscape and do a an actual video. So artist Azikawe Mohammed has made a little video background for you to look at while you're listening to this episode that I did, which is a solo episode on the subject of time travel. So this is not that whole thing. This is just a teaser trailer, if you like. You can find the whole video below. So listen to this teaser. If you like what you hear, click over to the entire video. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mindscape Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Carroll. And I wanted to tell you, those of you who have not already heard it, a little anecdote about one of the ways in which, in a very tiny manner, I have influenced popular culture myself. You may have heard of the movie Avengers Endgame. You probably have heard of it. It's the highest grossing movie of all time. Um, And in that movie, a prominent role is played by the idea of time travel. So I'm not going to give away any spoilers for the movie, but there was a previous movie, Infinity War, in which bad things happened, and the heroes in Endgame want to fix those bad things by going to the past. So when you want to have time travel in your movie, you have to make some choices about how it works. You know, we haven't seen time travel in the real world, so there's different theories of how it could possibly happen. And at one point, Paul Rudd, who is the actor playing Scott Lang, a.k.a. Ant-Man, he and everyone else are talking about the ideas of time travel. And Paul Rudd says, so you're telling me that Back to the Future is just bullshit? And I was actually serving as a science advisor for Endgame. Uh, Many people did. I was not the only one. But I remember I was in a room with the writers, the directors, the producers, and we were talking about the idea of time travel, time being one of my areas of expertise purportedly as a physicist. And I explained why I had bad feelings about Back to the Future, why I thought it was illogical and so forth. And so one of the people in the room said, you're telling me Back to the Future is just bullshit. And I agreed. And so that line appeared in the movie. I think I I helped that line come into existence in a very tiny way. And I think for the most part, Endgame did a good job at time travel. It was it was a little bit hazy on this idea of whether or not you can affect the past by going into it, but it it was much more respectable and logical than something like Back to the Future would be. But, you know, I always, it always bothered me a little bit, that line, because I have an attitude, a philosophy of how you should approach being a science advisor on movies. Um, You know, it's easy to get a bad reputation in Hollywood as a scientist if all you do is hear what they want to do in the movie and say, no, you can't do that, right? There are plenty of scientists who are very happy to uh, join the writers and directors and tell them that they can't do that. They don't really need extra people doing that. So my attitude is when you get a screenplay or a detailed outline that already exists and you're the science advisor, your job is not to scold them or tell them why they're wrong or give them a bad grade, okay? Your job is to help them. Your job is to serve the movie, tell the best, most interesting story you possibly can. And the way that I find is helpful to sort of mentally align yourself to that job, that responsibility, is to think of the screenplay as data rather than as a theory. In other words, you're not looking at the screenplay and going, "Uh, no, I don't think that's the way it would work. I don't think that's an accurate description of reality. That's a bad attitude to have to a screenplay. The screenplay is, in this world, what actually did happen. And so a scientist who gets data, gets you know an experimental result, and whose response is, no, that can't happen, is not going to get that far, right? Once you shift your uh, mental orientation from explaining what can and cannot happen to, oh, this is what happened, it's now my job to come up with an explanation for it, it frees your mind quite a bit. And it's almost always possible to come up with explanations of how things can happen. So in my mind, a movie that would be the greatest challenge to turn into something logical would be something like Back to the Future. And it's sort of time travel. Let's, let's just say it was a little freewheeling when it came to the logic of time travel, which is actually admitted 
by uh, the writers of the movie. They know it. But it's a much beloved movie, right? Like, it served its purposes narratively, so something good must be going on. And, of course, time travel stories are still very, very popular. Recently, Ed Solomon tweeted uh, the following tweet. Over the next few weeks, people will have a chance to watch an exquisitely crafted, physics-bending, very important filmic meditation on the quandaries of time and space, and also the much-anticipated Tenet. Uh, the joke, of course, here is that Tenet is a much-anticipated movie by Christopher Nolan that was just released. I haven't seen it because it's only in theaters and we're in a quarantine, so I'm not going to the theater, but apparently time and space bendiness is, is a big part of it. Ed Solomon is one of the screenwriters on another such movie, namely Bill and Ted Face the Music. Uh, Ed was also a screenwriter for the original Bill and Ted movies, and Bill and Ted, in a very different way, have time travel as crucial plot points. So we're not tired yet of time travel movies and time travel logic. It's important to see how far we can go in figuring it out. Thus, this podcast, which will be a solo job, I'm not going to talk to anyone else. I have my own things to say about time travel, and I want to talk about what time travel would be like, like how it could possibly work, uh, what is the science behind it, what do general relativity and quantum mechanics have to say about it, but then also philosophically, what would it mean? What would it mean for issues of causality and predetermination and free will? And finally, what does it mean narratively? Why do time travel stories work? How can they work? How should they work? What is the guide to either understanding time travel stories that already exist or maybe going out there and writing your own time travel story. So bringing all of these different issues together and all these considerations is is just the most fun thing in the world. And it's intellectually uh, a gas. And that's what Mindscape is all about. So if you're ready, let's go. <laughs>